let's do one more thing together. I'd like you to get out your theory book and when you get it I'd like you to turn to page 23. You can push pause and then when you've got it open push start and then I'll continue. So on page 23 it talks about something that's really Im an important skill for piano players to learn, well really any musician to learn how to do, but for us as piano players um, we need to learn how to be able to if you have the tools to be able to figure out music without practicing it and see if we can play it right the first time, called sight playing. It, it says at the top, sight, sight reading means reading music at a first sight. And normally sight reading or sight playing, we don't practice it. We just do it and you get one chance at it and um, it, you do how you do. There are certain things that help us if we're going to sight play well, and one of them is to do work with your eyes. I try to get you to do that when you're looking at pieces before you play it, just to start to analyze and see where do you see patterns, where do you see different, um, you see repeated notes, where you see different kind of intervals, skips. Um, when you can start to figure all those out a little bit ahead of time before you try to read the music and try to coordinate your eyes and your hands, it makes it a lot easier to play it right the first time. So they give you some simple ways to approach sight playing, which is something that's new in this second edition that I like about what they've done with these books. So I thought we'd work through this together. I don't believe that I had assigned this page to you because I was hoping we'd get a chance to do it together. What they have is they have, um, you can see three lines of music. They have, I should probably turn this around so we're both looking at the same thing at the same time. So you have the three rows of music. We're just going to look here at the first row. And the colored measure, what they'd like you to do is look for one in the line of music that matches that. So that's probably not too hard for you to figure out because it's the right next door neighbor place, isn't it? And then they say, sight read the measures going across to create a melody. So what they want you to do with a steady beat is just to play C, G, C, 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 G, 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 then together. And see how I didn't put any spaces? Even though there's spaces between the measures, they want you to try to link those together. And then you're going to do the same thing on each one of these lines. But you're only going to do it once. You're not going to practice it. You're just going to find the measure that looks the same and then you're going to try to play from here all the way to the double bar line. So what I'd like you to do is to at the end since I'm not here to be able to um, I'm not be able to, to listen to you do it. If you want your mom to listen to you to do, doing it just to have her check you that would be okay but right over here on the side maybe how many mistakes you realize you made because usually what happens is when we're sight playing we realize, oh, we made a mistake. Now, one of the other main important things about sight playing is that you don't stop. You just keep going. And if you make a mistake, you don't go back to fix it. You want to just keep going. If you make a mistake on one note, you just let your eyes move to the next place and just play the next note that you can. Sometimes you don't realize until you get to the end that you've messed up somewhere along the way because you don't end up right. But just jot a little note after each one about how you did on it so that you and I can talk about it when I see you. Then, could you turn over, we're going to do one of the listening activities. Um, you should have worked on this page this week, Tricky Time Signatures, page 31. If you need to push pause to get to the page, that would be good. So we had learned a new time signature, three beats in the measure instead of four beats in the measure like we had been playing. And so what they want you to do is if you look down, there's a little eye training there, which we were just doing eye training on the other page. If you haven't done the eye training yet, go ahead and um, push pause and you could do that right now. It's trying to figure out by looking at the math of the measures, is it going to be 3-4 or is it going to be 4-4? Four, four? And you write the time signature underneath the black arrow. What I'd like to do with you is the next part that says ear training. And you'll see that there's a number one and it has three, four, or four, four, number two, three, four, or four, four, and so forth and so on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play uh, a short little bit of music and it's going to be either in three, four time or four, four time. And your job is to 
circle the correct one. I'll play it twice. I'm guessing probably by the second time you'll have figured it out, whether it's triple or duple. So let's start with number one. Hopefully you have a pencil. If not, push pause and get a pencil. All right, number one, I'm gonna play it twice. Then at the end, I'm going to give a little bit of a pause and then I'll tell you the answer so you'll know right away. If you end up not getting it right, just like put an X through it and circle the correct answer, okay? All right, here is number one on the Tricky Time Signatures. your second one. Number two. And one more time. Could you feel the beat? Bop, bop. Ba, ba. It was four, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, here is number three. And one more time for number three. you doing are you getting them right I hope I know three three four is new for you though so if you're not don't be frustrated we'll just need a little bit more work with it but all right here is number four So you had 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and 3, 4. Very good. I hope that you got those, um, like you feel like you are understanding 3, 4. If not, don't worry. We'll work on it at your next lesson. I'll see you then.